beginning of the episode, there's a man looking through what looks like to be an office. His name is Caesar. He's going through the office. He finds a shotgun. He sticks it to his backpack. In walks a woman. Her name is Alana. She says, did you find anything? He's all, no. And she says, what did you put in your bag? He says, reach into my bag, honey, and you can pull out anything. <laughs> She's like, okay, no. Basically, she tells him that there's this weird man out on the beach. You need to come out and talk to him. Well, they go out and they talk to him, and it's John Locke. John Locke is alive. The next morning, they're trying to figure out, you know, as much as they can about him. He's trying to figure out as much as he can about them. He wants to find the passenger list, and um, he has to talk to Caesar. He tells him about the Dharma Initiative, and, and he says, how do you know that? And he's like, because I remember being on this island. And they're like, what else do you remember? He's all, I, I remember dying. Just so that you're... And Ilana's like, okay, the Twilight Zone, honey, was canceled a long time ago. So, this is the flashback, and it's the majority of the episode. Remember, Locke was trying to... Um, had to turn the wheel, because Christian told him to, and the time flash started. Okay, well, at the end of the time flash, Locke was in the desert. He rolls over, he throws up. He rolls over this way. He looks in, off in the distance, there's a pole with a video camera on it. He knows that someone must be watching. He's waving and saying, can somebody ha please help me? Well, no one comes in the middle of the day. Later that evening, a pickup truck almost runs him over. The people in the pickup truck jump out, they grab him, throw him into the back of the pickup truck, and drive off. Take him to this not-really-hospital-looking hospital. The doctor takes a bunch of alcohol and starts pouring it all over his fucking wound because he's about to set this bad boy, because remember, he's has got a big-ass bone sticking up out of his leg. Has him bite down on, I don't know, a piece of bark or something, I don't know, and then sets that puppy. Locke passes out from the pain. Two or three days pass, I'm not really sure when. When he comes to, Charles Woodmore is sitting next to him. He's like, hello, John Locke. Do you remember me? We met on the island when I was 17. That was a long time ago, because I'm an old, decrepit man. How long has it been for you? And Locke's like, um, only four days. What do you want with me? Because I just went through this ordeal. <laughs> yes, uh, about your leg. Um, the doctor here did his best, but then I had a specialist come, and so you can thank me any time. Charles Woodmore tells Locke, I assume that you're back here to try and get the, the people that left the island back. No, it's going to take some convincing. It's been three whole years. They've all gone on with their lives. You're going to need some help. The next morning, he sets him up with all the information that he needs to find all the people that he needs to bring back to the island. Also, a fake ID. And the fake ID is in the name of Jeremy Bentham, who is a British philosopher. I don't know if there's any, you know, significance of that or what, but I, whatever, okay. And Locke's all, okay, so why are you helping me? Why do I, why should I trust you? And he says, well, because you're special, Mr. Locke. There's a war coming, and if you are not on that island when that war comes, the wrong side is going to win. Locke, because his leg is hurt, has to be in a wheelchair, so he has to have a driver drive him around. Well, the driver that Charles Woodmore, you know, gives him... Uh, is named Matthew, I forget his last name. He was actually Locke's orderly, or one of the orderlies that looked after Locke when he broke his back several years ago and told him to go on the Australian walkabout. He's all, I can do whatever you want. I can find whoever you want, Mr. Locke. Just tell me. And he's like, just be quiet and just drive. So the first place they go to is they go to Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic, where they find Saeed. Saeed is working with some sort of like, like, uh, I don't know, it's like a, like a Habitat for Humanity type deal, you know, charity organization. They're building houses and whatever. And he's all, what the hell are you doing here, Locke? I have a hammer. I know how to use it. He asks Saeed to come back to the island, and Saeed says, no. I am finally married the woman that I've loved all my life. We were married for li nine long months, and then she got murdered. So as you can see, I'm very happy. Now, if you'll go away with your bald-headed self, I have a roof that I have to fix. So the next place they go to is uh, New York. And while they're waiting for whoever it is that Locke's waiting to see, he tells the driver, Matthew, I would like you to look up Helen Norwood. He's like, um, who's Helen Norwood? He's like, you know, just don't, just, like, just do your job. He sees the person he's waiting for. He gets out in the little wheelchair, and he sees Walt across the street. I guess he was getting out of school or something like that. And Walt comes over, and he's like, hi, John. He's like, hi, Walt. And he's like, bye, John. He's like, bye, Walt. And Matthew's like, um, you weren't going to ask him to come along? And he's like, no, that boy's been through enough. And, and I, if I take him back, we're going to have to explain that his father is dead, and that's just bad. Okay, so the next place they go to is Santa Rosa, California, and they're trying to get, he's trying to convince Hurley to come with him to the island. Hurley thinks that he's one of the ghosts that he can see from because he can only speak to the people, the dead people from the island. He thinks he's a ghost, and he asks the people that are standing, you know, 
I guess they're kind of like making sure he doesn't run away. And he's like, dude, am I talking to a dude in a wheelchair? And they're like, dude, you're so talking to a dude in a wheelchair. <laughs> he's like, dude, I thought you were dead. He's like, Hurley, no, I'm not dead. But you know what? You need to come back to the island. He's like, why? And like, what, how the hell did you find me? And what are you doing here? And he's like, you know, like, okay, well, Ben told me I have to bring you back. And now Charles Wildmer is saying that I should bring you in. And he's like, no, no, those are crazy people. No, no, I don't want to be. And he's telling people, take me back in. I want to go back in right now. I, I need medication. I need to be put down. And the next place they go to is, um... L.A. This is Kate. Kate flat out tells him, no. The answer is no, John. You told me, yeah, if, everyone, if I don't go back, everyone on the island will die, then the answer is no. And um, I always wondered why you were so adamant about trying to keep us on the island and have us never be rescued and why you're trying to get us back on the island now. And I figured it out. It's because you've never loved anyone. And Locke's like, that's not true. I loved someone once. He's talking about Helen. And she said, oh, really? Well, what happened? He says, you know, it just didn't work out. She didn't like me because I was too angry and obsessive. She's all, and that's different from now, how? He's like, oh, so you're not going to go back? She's like, no, please leave because, like, you know, I have to go breastfeed Aaron. They're leaving Kate's house, and he asks Matthew, he says, I want you to take me to Helen now. He's like, well, I didn't find her. He's like, stop lying. He's like, okay, I'll take you to see her. He takes him to a cemetery, and he finds out that Helen had passed away, like, I don't know, maybe, maybe two years from the time that it is that's taking place. And she passed away from a brain aneurysm. And he's like, she loved me, and, and boo-hoo, and, and whatever. And Matthew goes over to him and is like, um, can you get over this real quick? Because um, we've only got so much time left in the episode. And the TV series needs to go on because we're going to be wrapping up in about a season and a half. And it can't all be about you. And I'm really sorry that you're sad, but we got to go. He gets locked. He puts him in the car. And on his way to walk around to get over to the driver's seat, someone shoots him. Locke is freaking out because someone has shot his driver that he didn't like very much. So he decides to climb into the front seat because he doesn't want to be killed too and drive that car with a casted leg, drive that car off. Well, he eventually gets into a car accident. He wakes up in the hospital, the hospital that Jack works at. Jack is sitting next to him when he comes to and he says, what the hell are you doing here, Locke? He's like, he's like you have to come back to, with me to the island. He's like, why? I, I can't believe this. And he's like, well, it's fate. You know, like how, it's got to be fate. Like how, how do you explain that I ended up in your hospital and whatever? He's like, it's a really big hospital. Okay. He's like, you got to get them all to come back and whatever. And he's like, you stay away from me and you stay away from them. And what? And he's like, no, your dad said, told me to say hi to you. And he's like, my dad is dead and don't you talk about him because I'm going to be very mad and very angry. He's like, you're a lonely old man. Just go be lonely, old, and bald and stay away from us. Locke thinks that he's a failure. Okay. So he eventually ends up in his motel room and he's going to try and commit suicide. He's up on like a desk or the counter or something like that and he's going to jump and just hang himself. Uh, before he did that, he wrote a little suicide note to Jack. Ben busts in at the last minute and is like, John, you don't want to do this. Let me help you, John. Get down from the counter, John. It's okay, John. My eyes are really big, John. And he's like, okay, well, I'll help you. We'll do this together. Let's go talk to Sun. And he says, no, I promised Jin that I wouldn't get Sun. And Ben's like, Jin's alive. Uh, Locke tells him, you know, they're supposed to go and see Eloise Hawking. And this is after he's already, you know, like got him down and whatever. As soon as Ben hears the, the name Eloise Hawking, he's like, are you sure it was Eloise Hawking? And he's like, yeah, do you know her? He's like, yes, I know her. And then he takes the extension cord and wraps it around Locke's n neck and strangles him. And, and, and Locke dies. But then he fixes up the, the, the room to make it look like he was never in there. So he cleans everything, he gets Locke's body and props it up like it's been hanging there the whole frickin' time and whatever, and so to make, to make it look like it was actually a suicide and not that he killed him. And he looks up at him just before he goes out the door and says, I really will miss you, John. I think he was in love with Locke, but like he couldn't express that in any other way other than killing him. That's really sad. Okay. All right, so back on the island. Locke is asking, you know, Ilana and Caesar, you know, like, you, how come you don't have the passenger list? And I think they tell him that, like, the pilot ran off with it and some lady and one of the boats, you know, like yesterday and whatever, so they don't know. He's like, but you can account for everyone on the island and whoever was else in the crash. And he's like, well, there's us and there were some people that disappeared and we're not really sure what's going on with that. And then there's the people who were hurt. And he says, the people who were hurt, you've got to take me to see them because otherwise we're not going to really have a shock for the end of the episode. They take him into, I'm not even sure where it is, but they take him into some place, and they're looking at all these, you know, like, injured people, and they stop at one, and, like, Locke recognizes who it is, but they both look at him and say, do you know him? And he looks down, and it's Ben. And he says, yeah, I know him. That's the man that killed me. And if you're lost, that's the way it's supposed to be.